All right. Hey, everybody. We're recording right now, and I'm going to post this up like I always do. It'll it'll post up to the uh, to the Canvas page uh, at Marietta College. Um, this one I'm going to also post up to YouTube. I know for these coaching calls, we don't always post them up to YouTube. Um, only sometimes, uh, but th this one will be because what I'm what I'm going to do today is. I'm going to talk about some of the like some of the unsung heroes um, uh, in the ingredient world. Uh, a lot of times we we talk a lot about in this in this course, we talk a lot about specific strains of probiotics. You know, we talk about Lactobacillus helveticus 52 and the fact that it can lower neuroinflammation. It can help with serotonin levels and it can help with depression and things like that. Right. That's a really sort of sexy probiotic ingredient to talk about because it has really good research. And sometimes we talk about specific herbals um, that have really good research behind them, like um, like the like the kana that we've talked about before. Uh, we use a brand called Zembrin because it has really good, really good data to show that it helps with uh, it helps with uh, not just reducing your stress and reducing your depression, but it helps to raise resilience so you can handle more stress and you can solve problems and you can navigate difficulties and things like that, right? But what I'm going to talk about today is I just counted them up. I have 12 products over here that have 12 really cool ingredients that we sometimes never talk about because we have all kinds of really interesting things to talk about, right? So we talk about all the cool stuff and then the hour is up and we don't talk about any other stuff. Or, you know, we'll talk about trying to improve mental wellness in somebody and we'll say, well, let's do something with, with probiotic strains. Let's do something with specific prebiotic fibers. Let's do something with, you know, these sort of superstars. But then some of these other guys that are like play sort of a supporting role, don't get as much of the limelight and they really, really should because there's because there's good stuff about them. Um, the other reason that I'm doing this is that even though this course isn't really an Amari course, right, per se, um, I, the I want to talk about these Amari products that I'm going to focus on today because at Amari, uh, we're having a big problem right now. We're having a big problem keeping products in inventory. And for those of you who are Amari wellness partners or I guess we call them brand partners now. Um, one of the big frustrating things is that some of those superstar products like Mentabiotics and Edge and a couple of other things are out of stock right now because we're growing so fast, right? That's If there's a problem to have, that's probably the best problem to have, right? That you can't keep products in stock because th 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 this just happened with Mentabiotics. It went out of stock. We, we, we jumped through a whole bunch of hoops with our manufacturers. We finally got it back into stock and it immediately went out of stock again, right? Because it just... We're, we're 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 at the point now where everybody wants to do something for their mental health and you know we're having trouble keeping things in stock so what i want to do is for people who are brand partners give them alternatives to say like look you can't sell antibiotics right now you can't sell edge you can't sell happy juice because we don't have it so maybe focus your customers on something else that has other really good benefits that they can they can that they can benefit from. Okay, so I'm going to go through each product sort of sequentially, and um, if there's questions about them, put them in the chat because what I'd like to do is just go through each one of these 12 products that I have over here in my sort of show and tell desk on the side. Um, at the end of each one, I'll look in the chat and see if anybody has questions about that product. I'll answer those questions and then I'll move to the next one. And then if you have other questions that are sort of like out in left field, we can we can do the unmuting thing at the end. OK, so if that's good for everybody, we'll get rolling uh, and I'll try to do these really quickly. Like I could do I could do a whole hour seminar about each individual product. But what I'm going to do is just give you the just give you a couple of highlight bullets. And when I start with something like Menta Focus, this is a product that really, really shines. Even though it's called Menta Focus, what this really helps with is memory. And the reason for that is that we've got a lot of ingredients in here that help with focus. New Zealand pine bark um, extract, um, uh, uh, Asian apple fruit extract. They have different kinds of polyphenols in them, uh, French grapeseed extract that are all going to help with neuron activation, improving brain blood flow. We have got oregano and sage and things that have been used sort of traditionally to help the brain do its job. But the superstar ingredient in Menta Focus is a very unique pomegranate extract. And you can look on the label and you can see it says pomegranate extract. And then in parentheses, and sometimes 
because this is the most interesting part of the whole label is what's in parentheses, it will tell you the exact type. And this one is called the wonderful variety, right? This is sort of a trademark um, name. It, it's, it's, fr it's from the company that makes Palm Wonderful, right? If you've ever been to the grocery store and seen those, those, those funny shaped, they're sort of like shaped like a, like a figure eight pomegranate juices this is these are the same pomegranates this extract comes from those same pomegranates they grow in california and <clears throat> excuse me the way that this pomegranate is extracted is that it's extracted to be high in something called punicolagens that's one of the 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 phytonutrients in there that has been shown and here's where last week's um uh, uh, lecture is going to make sense. It's been shown in, so, in some of those studies to help people with Alzheimer's disease and senile dementia to perform activities of daily living better. So their, their memory is better. Their confusion is lower. Um, their sundowners symptoms, right? A lot of times people with Alzheimer's and the, at the end of the day, when the sun goes down, they get more confused, they get more agitated. And so this extract can help reduce some of those some of those problems and help them perform their activities of daily living feeding themselves clothing themselves you know not not getting lost and being able to navigate around and things like that so that's super super cool the reason i mentioned last week's lecture is that all of that what i just said about alzheimers and sundowners and senile dementia we can't say any of that even though that's what the research is on so we have to talk about helping you, your brain work better, supporting mental function, supporting mental focus, supporting uh, normal memory, right? Because you can't say you're solving a memory problem. That's a disease indication. You have to say support normal memory, right? So, you know, if, if, you, if you weren't here last week and we talked about the difference between what the science says and what your claims language for the product can say, go back and watch that. It's posted in Canvas. It's posted on YouTube. I did, that's one that I did post on YouTube because it's a really important concept for people to get across. But the reason that this product it really, really shines is because of the unique pomegranate extract. And it's not like other pomegranates. You can get lots and lots of pomegranate extracts that do an okay job of opening up blood vessels and improving blood flow. But but there's all kinds of ways we can skin that cat, right? Pomegranate's one way we do it. Beetroot is one way that we do it. Noni fruit is one that we one way that we can do that. So there's a couple of ways that you can open blood vessels and get more blood flow. This does a lot more than just that, and it's because of the puna collagens. There's all kinds of phytonutrients that you can get in pomegranate. You can get flavonoids and polyphenols and elagic acids. Most of the pomegranate extracts on the market are standardized for elagic acids. That's not a bad thing, right? That's going to do the blood flow piece of it, but it's not going to do the same neuron activation that this kind of pomegranate extract does. So Mentifocus really, really helps with overall brain function. That's why it's called Mentifocus. It could be called Menta Memory, but that, that doesn't roll off the tongue as well for the marketing folks. So that's why it was ended up being called Mentifocus. So that's that one. I'll look in here in the chat and see if there's any questions about that. And there aren't right now. But this is... um. This is a product that I sometimes recommend to people who are just trying to increase their polyphenol intake, right? So polyphenols are those compounds in fruits and vegetables that give a lot of the brightly colored nature, right? So, so the, the, the reason that berries are so brightly red and so bright blue and so bright black, like blackberries are, aren't really black. They're just really, really blue because they're so high in polyphenols. Black beans are not really black. They're just dark, dark blue because the polyphenols that are in there are, are giving them that, that, that color. So if you're eating a lot of Mediterranean diet, you're getting lots of polyphenols. If somebody wants a polyphenol supplement, I'll recommend this because it's it's giving you all that benefit for the brain, but polyphenols are also good for your blood vessels. They're good for your heart. They're good for, uh, for your gut lining. They can help to protect good bacteria once you've grown them with probiotics and prebiotics. So a lot of times we will talk about polyphenols being prebiotic because they can help protect the good bacteria in the in the gut. They can protect the probiotics. So there's lots of reasons that you would want to take this, even if you're not sort of in a in a memory deficit sort of a sort of a situation. So I'll put this one to the side. And there is a question now. Um, uh, which product would you pair 
meant to focus with for great brain health stack? Uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Um, I would do it. I would do meant to focus with omega and uh, uh, o- omegas are some of the other really really important. Um, uh, brain health things. Omegas, omegas do everything, right? Omegas, <clears throat> I'll talk about omegas now. Um, omegas are one of the only product that I recommend virtually across the board for everybody to supplement with. And the reason for it is, is sort of twofold. Omega-3 fatty acids do a lot of good things, right? They're good for your eyes. They're good for your heart. They're good for your blood vessels. They're good for your metabolism, like blood sugar control. Um, their 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 anti depression um, qualities are almost unmatched from a from a nutrient standpoint. There are really good studies to show that a lot of uh, veterans that are at risk for for suicide. Um, if you supplement them with omega threes, you solve an omega three deficiency that they have, and you dramatically reduce suicidal thoughts and and suicidal actions. Right, so really, really good benefits for for omegas. But the other reason I recommend them across the board for people is that most people are deficient in them. Most people don't eat you know, three, four, five servings of fatty fish every week. And so you're not getting the omega-3s in your diet, right? Uh, Nobody does. I'm a professional nutritionist and I love fish and I don't, I don't get the fatty fish that I need, right? And when I say fatty fish, we're, we're, you know, we're talking about things like uh, mackerel and sardines and anchovies and salmon, you know, when I say salmon, people go, oh, I eat salmon. And you go, well, do you eat, you know, Three to three to four times a week, do you eat a nice fatty salmon fillet? And of course, nobody does that, right? The kind of fish that most people are getting is like tilapias and you know white fish, which is a good source of protein, but not a good source of, of fat. And usually, when I when I rattle all those off, you know, mackerels and bluefish and and you know sea bass and things like that, people are like, oh, those are the fishy fish. I don't like those fishy fish. The reason they're fishy is because of the fat in there because of the omega 3s. So they're almost almost everybody needs a supplement of this. And it couldn't be easier. When you're looking for an omega 3 supplement, you have to look for something that is pure and potent. Um, we use in this product right now, this might change. I'll explain why in just a second. Right now, we use really, really small fish. We use anchovies, um, bait fish, basically. Um, the reason that we use those is because they're really sustainable. You know, you can catch them all day long, and there's just billions more of them in the ocean, right? And they're, they're, not, uh, they're not a threatened fishery. Um, so you can you can catch lots of anchovies, you can catch lots of sardines, and they're really, really sustainable. They're also high in omega-3s. So when you squish them, you can get a lot of oil out of them. And you can get it's because it's low on the food chain, meaning it's not, you know, a, a, it's not a big bluefish or it's not a big uh, uh, marlin or something like that. It hasn't gone through this process of bioconcentration. If you take a little tiny fish that has a speck of mercury in it. And then that little fish gets eaten by a bigger fish and that bigger fish is eating lots and lots of little fish. Now that medium sized fish is gonna have a medium amount of mercury in it because of bioconcentration. All those little sort of pinpricks of mercury or heavy metals or lead or whatever you're gonna have in that little tiny fish. Now it's concentrated in that medium fish and that medium fish gets eaten by a big fish and it gets concentrated more and the big fish gets eaten by a bigger fish. So as you go up the chain, um, you, you're, you're getting more and more concentration of stuff that you don't want and you have to filter it out, right? So you can filter it out, right? There's ways that we can do that, but better to start with, with, with pure quality material in the first place. That's why we do the, that's why, that's why we do the lower, lower food chain fish. Um, that might change. Uh, the last two years of, of, of fish harvesting have been bad years. And so there's not a lot of low on the food chain fish oil right now. And so what a lot of companies are having to do when we go, so we can go to Norway and we can get good fish, good, good quality fish. We can go to Chile, we can get good quality fish. Because both of those parts of the world have had poor harvests, what we might have to do next year is start to blend different large fishes into our into our blend. Right now, we use purely, you can see right on the label, you can see the fish contains fish, wild anchovy, 
That's what it says. But what we might have to do is say, well, we're going to use some anchovies and we're going to use some salmon and we're going to use some cod and we're going to use some flounder, whatever. But because you do that, right, you can still get to the omega-3 content that you want. But now you have to consider, wait a minute, that higher on the food chain fish, it's going to be higher in mercury and higher in lead and potentially higher in environmental toxins like microplastics and PCBs and things like that. And those have to be identified and then filtered out. So it's an additional step that you have to do. But like we're in a supply chain right now where that's probably what we're going to have to do for the supply chain next year. And we're aware of it, right? A lot of companies aren't aware of it. They would just say, yeah, give me the cheapest fish oil that you have. Okay. So that's the purity, po that's the purity piece of it. Then the potency piece of it comes. This isn't open. I think I'm going to open this so I can show you guys something real quick. If you've ever bought a fish oil at a place like Costco or BJ's or Walmart or something like that, you've probably seen these giant containers of fish oil where you get a thousand fish oil capsules for not a lot of money, right? And you look at that, you know, most people look at that and they go, oh, what a great deal. I'm going to get that. And then you get it home and you open up the, you open up the container and you, you, you go to take your first fish oil and you take it out and you don't know if you've bought suppositories or if you've bought capsules because they're enormous, enormous things, right? They're, they're just giant. These ones, I don't know if this is going to come across great. I'm going to hold it up to the camera. That's a relatively small fish oil soft gel. Um, the reason that we can give you a small little thing like this rather than a, that, than a, what would, what would be more than double size um, is because of the potency of the fish oil. So when you do the extraction of the fish oil, so you, you know, you want to get just the omega threes. If you, the, the, the omega three content in this guy is, is 70% there. You can go up to as high as about 90% with traditional extraction techniques. Once you go above that, you start to, you start to get into some weird sort of pharmaceutical um, areas. I actually don't like supplementing with those. 70% is about as high as I like to go because any higher than that, it starts to get almost over purified, right? You guys have heard, and you've, and I've talked, I've talked in the class about the concept of ultra processed foods. You don't really want ultra processed fish oil. You, you want some processing, but not over processing. It's sort of like the Goldilocks approach, right? The just right processing. And 70% seems to be about where it is. So 70% means you can put a lot of omega threes in a small space. Most fish oil on the market is 30% is the omega-3 content. And that means it's less than less than half the potency of this, which means that to deliver the same amount of omega-3s, if it's less than half potency, you have to give more than double the volume. And that's why the pills end up being so big. Okay, hopefully hopefully that makes sense to everybody. The other reason that, that high purity is good is because when you swallow this and it gets down into your stomach and it, it it's going to have a little bit of oxidation that, that, that happens there, when fish oil becomes oxidized, that's what gives it the fishiness. So like these, it's a fresh bottle. It doesn't smell like anything. It smells, it smells like nothing in there. Those ones that you buy at Walmart, those big ones, you, you, even with a new bottle, you'll open it up and you smell it. I can see people making faces because you've probably smelled that face before, or I mean, you've smelled that smell before. That fishiness is oxidized oil. You don't want that. One of the reasons you're taking fish oil is to lower your inflammation. If you're taking oxidized fish oil, you're actually increasing your inflammation in the body. You're, you're doing the exact opposite thing of what you're trying to do with these, with these, um, you know, with these little supplements. So uh, purity is one, potency is one. And then the other important consideration is uh, the ratio between the omega-3s. So when we're supplementing with omega-3s, we're supplementing with, with two. One is called EPA and one is called DHA. DHA is used to build nerves. So uh, pregnant moms, we always recommend that they supplement with a fish oil that contains DHA. Uh, and sometimes we'll, we'll recommend they supplement with just DHA, depending on what they're, what they're going for, because that DHA can be used as a structural building block to make neurons in that growing baby, right? So if you want your baby to have a, a, a big, beautiful brain, you want to make sure that you have enough DHA on board so that you can deliver that for the, for the baby's developing brain. 
once we get to once or after we're born and after about the first year of life, DHA becomes less important because like an old guy like me, I could take DHA all day long and I'm not really going to build any more neurons because of that. There are ways we can build neurons and I'll talk about it with the next product. Um, but DHA is, is, is less important uh, from an omega-3 standpoint than the other omega-3, which is EPA. The reason we want to supplement with a lot of EPA is because it's anti-inflammatory. And so the blend that we use in this product is a five to one ratio, five parts EPA to one part DHA. And it's that five to one ratio that's been most associated with an anti-inflammatory effect. So that's a good heart health effect. But it's also the same effect, same ratio that's been associated with a reduction in neuroinflammation, brain inflammation, and that is a hallmark of depression. So if if your brain is is inflamed, you are almost a hundred percent of the time going to also be depressed. So one of the very effective ways to lower depression is to lower neuroinflammation, and the best way to lower neuroinflammation is to supplement with a five to one ratio of EPA DHA. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope if it if it's unclear, um, put it in the chat and I can um and I can I can clarify. So that's it. That's it for Omega. I'm going to put that one to the side. I'm going to look in the chat and see if there's some questions about this. Um, so Gail saying, I read the refining process removes contaminants and toxins from a finished omega-3 product, but also removes the natural polyphenols that keep the omega-3s from oxidizing. What are your thoughts about polyphenols and their importance to? Yeah, so it's 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 I don't know if I would say it's it, that it's um that it's polyphenols particularly. Um I don't think there's going to be a lot of polyphenols in in a fish oil like this. Um so I don't I don't think that is the I don't I don't think that's an issue. There are other naturally occurring antioxidants in fish. A lot of times you'll see in fish oils companies will 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 add um a little bit of vitamin E or a little bit of rosemary or a little bit of something to keep it from oxidizing in the in the capsule. You'll also notice for what what we have here. I want to see where it falls on the label. It's not showing up in the supplement facts panel, but it only shows up in the other ingredients. We also infuse this with uh, lavender oil, the lavender essential oil, just a little bit, just a little bit to have an antioxidant effect like we just talked about, but also to reduce the fish burps part, right? So fish burps that you get from omega-3 supplements are oxidized oil. That's what you're tasting. That fishiness is the oxidized oil. So if we can keep it from oxidizing, that's one way to reduce it. If we can sort of mask it with something like lavender, that's another way to do it. So if you ever got a, a, a burp with this product, you'd get a lavender burp, which is actually, I won't say it's lovely, but it's 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 non-offensive at least, okay? So that's the reason that we have it there. You also have a, there's not enough lavender in here to give you an anti-stress effect directly. Um, if you've ever smelled lavender, a lot of people use lavender as sort of a calming sort of a thing. That works if you're delivering it here into the nose, directly into the brain. That's like the nose is a super highway directly into the brain. This lavender does have an anti, um, anti-stress anti effect, but it's very indirect. It works sort of like chamomile. So if you were ever to drink a chamomile tea, that chamomile has a relaxing effect on the smooth muscles in your gut. When you, when you swallow it, when it gets to your gut, that relaxing effect on your second brain sends a signal through the vagus nerve to your brain in your head. So you have a relaxing effect in your head. So when people drink chamomile tea, it relaxes them. It calms them down here in their head brain, but it does it because it's relaxing the small muscles in your, in your second brain. And then, and then they talk to each other. Same thing happens with lavender. We're eating it. It's relaxing here. That relaxation signal is being transmitted up the vagus nerve and it relaxes here. So there's a lot going on here. You guys had no idea probably that there were all those moving parts, all those reasons you can get a bad fish oil. And we've we've made sure that we that we sort of checked them all off with, with this particular one. Okay. Um, uh, oh, somebody loves, Karen, you love sardines. But I don't like sardines. I did eat mackerel last night though at dinner. Um, so that's hooray, hooray for me, I guess. Um, uh, is that the same? And same same thing with sunset. So with, with sunset, so sunset, 
is uh, an, is a fish oil tocotrienol supplement that we have for in, in the in the merged companies from the Kiani side. So Sunset uses primarily salmon oil as their as their source of, of omega threes. What we're going to do because of everything that I just said about purity and potency and 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 the right ratios, but you know the five to one ratio, we're actually going to merge the omegas that's here in omega three or in omega. We're going to merge this oil into sunset. So we're going to keep the tocotrienols that are in sunset, but we're going to sort of upgrade, if you will, the oil. Um, but it's going to be a blend of small fish fish oil and bigger fish fish oil because we want to maintain the salmon. Salmon also has some other benefits, right? When, I, when I'm talking about fish oil and omega-3s, the fish oil itself, before you concentrate it in omega-3s, has other stuff. And the cool thing about salmon oil is that salmon is also high in another phytonutrient called um, astaxanthin that comes from an algae. So sardines aren't going to have it, but salmon will have it because salmon are eating lots and lots of algae. And so they get that astaxanthin from the algae and then they concentrate it in their bodies. That's why, that's why salmon are pink. That's why flamingos are pink, but we're not going to put flamingos in our, in our fish oil. Because that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing. So don't get me started. Um, I will talk about astaxanthin in just a second too. Um, and let me see. Judy has something for cognitive and memory. What do you think about these? Uh, aronia berry, love aronia berry. Um, mycelium uh, based extracts like lion's mane and reishi. Um, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about mushroom extracts in just a second. Um, I'm a big fan of lion's mane. I'm a big fan of all the mushrooms. Um, not so much for a mental benefit. Their lion's mane is good for a mental benefit. Most of the other mushrooms, chagas and shiitakes and um, uh, and and reishi, uh, are really good for the immune system. And I'll talk I'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. All right. So let me go on to this next one. Um, menta sink. So menta focus um, was part of the original fundamentals that we launched way back when Amari started. So the idea then was we had Mentabiotics, which is out of stock right now, but that was sort of the gut product. Mentafocus was the brain product. So you have your two brains. And Mentasync was the product that helped the axis. So those two brains were synced to each other and, can, and could communicate um, more efficiently. And so Mentasync, wh where this one really stands uh, apart is that it's doing two things to allow these two brains to talk to each other better. So the first part of it is let's make sure we're not causing any interference. Um, in, this, in the access section of this course, that particular module, I talk a lot about how the two brains talk to each other. And if there's static in the system, if you're over inflamed, if you're over oxidized, um, if you have too much stress hormones like cortisol, those can all be things that can interfere with the signals going from the second brain up to the first brain or the first brain down to the second brain. So you have to remove the, the, that static. And one of the best ways to get rid of the static is to make sure you have good gut integrity. So leaky gut is a lot of times the source of that static. And if we can shore up those tight junctions, you have less leaky gut, you have less static in the system. And so you have, a, you have, a, you have the ability to have clear signals. Okay. So some of the ingredients in Menta Sync help tighten up those intestinal tight junctions in between each of those individual intestinal cells. Um, and one of those key ingredients is something called butyrate. Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid that we make whenever we digest fiber. Whenever your microbiome eats fiber, the side effect or the side stream of that, the end product of, of bacteria eating fiber is short chain fatty acids. So if we're getting enough fiber, and especially if we're getting enough prebiotic fiber, you're making butyrates. And so you're getting the short chain fatty acids that you need. This product also gives it to you. So you're taking butyrate and making butyrate at the same time. And so that's a, it's, a, it's a really good way to do that. Reason that, that we like short chain fatty acids, they're good for the gut lining. They're good for your mucus lining in your gut. They're good for your immune system. They're good for your inflammatory profile. They're good for your. They're good for your um, protecting your neurons. They do. They do so many miraculous things in the body, right? And if we're fiber deficient, like so many of us are, we're we're short chain fatty acid deficient, right? So 
this is a really important supplement to take every day. Um, there's also an ingredient in here, in here called zinc carnosine that can help with those tight junctions as well. So this product, first and foremost, is solving the issue of leaky gut. The second piece of it is that it's also improving the main way that your two brains talk to each other, and that's your immune system. And that's what we refer to in that axis lecture is priming the immune system. So what immune system priming is, is that if your immune system is suppressed, for example, um, you're sleep deprived, uh, you're under a lot of stress, you're, you're, you're not eating the right diet, right? Those are all things that can suppress your immune system. You'll be more at risk for catching upper respiratory tract infections, colds, flus, COVID, that kind of stuff. You'll be more at risk for um, developing cancer. Uh, you don't want to have a suppressed immune system. Neither, though, do you want to have an overactive immune system, because if you have an overactive immune system, you'll be more likely to attack yourself. You'll be more likely to have allergies and food intolerances and maybe autoimmune system diseases, right? So you, this is another Goldilocks example, right? Not too little, not too much, just right. And the way that we prime the immune system is with a, an ingredient in here called beta-glucans. Beta-glucans are a yeast extract, right? Well, we can extract them from yeast cell walls. So we use just regular baker's yeast or brewer's yeast, and you can extract a very particular part of that cell wall called a beta-glucan. In fact, it's called a, it's called a 1,6-beta-glucan, um, very particular structure that your immune system cells will look at and it will basically make them wake up and pay attention. It doesn't activate them. It doesn't stimulate them. It just brings the stimulating your immune system is a two-step process. Beta-glucans help you go that one step. So it takes them from resting to activated, but it does it to, it takes them from resting to alert, but not activated. And that's important if you want to have a good, robust immune system response when you encounter something. So think about it this way. Let's say uh, I just sneezed on you and I and then I said, oh, geez, sorry about sneezing. I just tested positive for COVID. I hope it's not going to be a problem for everybody, right? So if that were the case and you were you were exposed to the, to the COVID-19 virus, your immune system would have to go through two stages in order to get ready to fight that. It would have to it would have to wake up and then it would have to activate and then it would have to go through the fighting. Um, if we can use this every day, your immune system is in that first stage. It's in ready mode. So it's faster to get into actual fighting activity if you encounter a pathogen. Um, so that's good. You want your you want your immune system to be vigilant at all times, right? Vigilant against viruses, vigilant against bacteria, vigilant against cancer cells. So th this is a really, really good thing. The other reason you would want to take this every day, and, and this is why this ingredient is called what it is, this beta-glucan is called Wellmune, is the name of the ingredient, because it, it improves wellness signals in the body. If your immune system is properly primed, it's not suppressed, and it's not overly activated, it's properly primed, you just feel better. And that's something my lab found 10 or more years ago, that if you properly prime your immune system, it's helping the two brains talk to each other more efficiently. And that just improves our overall well-being, right? So depression is lower, fatigue is lower, brain fog is lower. You just feel generally better if you have a properly primed immune system. So that's, that's what this product does. One part gut integrity, one part immune system priming. And because of that, we, we feel better and our gut brain axis works, works more efficiently. Okay. So let me see if there's any other questions. Um, let me see. Somebody put a question about blending the, oh, well, blending the fish oils uh, reduce the effectiveness. No, no, not at all. It's um, it, as long as you're, you're blending to a target, right? So we would blend to a target of five to one EPA DHA. And then we would also blend to a potency level. So what we want to try to do is with every serving, we want to give people around a gram of total omega-3s, right? That's the, that's the sweet spot, if you will, for brain benefits, mood benefits, heart benefits, anti-inflammatory benefits, all that kind of stuff. You can actually over supplement with fish oils. I'll give you a quick example. Um, I take two of these almost every night. 
um, I'll either take two of these or I'll take three sunsets, right? I, I sort of switch back and forth between them. Um, I'm looking forward to when we just have them merged into one product and it'd just be simpler for me. If I were to double that, um, for me personally, doubling that for a couple of days, I would start to get bloody noses because it's thinning my blood just a little bit too much. Um, you know, somebody else might be able to do double dose and it'd be perfectly fine. But if they went to a triple dose, they would, they would, they would bleed excessively. Like you, you know, you cut yourself shaving and it just, it wouldn't stop, you know? So the, like you can get too much of a good thing with, with omega threes. That's why we have the recommendation, um, suggestions on the, on the bottles. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I missed that Renee. Uh, let, let's see, let's see if there's anything else. Does menta sink help heal the gut more than mentabiotics? Um, I wouldn't say more Julianne. I would just say different. Right. So um, there's a lot of ways we can solve the leaky gut problem. Right. So zinc carnosine does does one piece of that. Um, uh, short chain fatty acids will do one piece of that um, in this product. I'll talk about later. GBX burn. This has a carrot pomace extract that also solves leaky gut in a different way. Uh, mentabiotics can do it in different ways. So like there's lots of things that can cause leaky gut as a problem. And so there's lots of solutions that we have for that as well. Um, and so, you know, there, therein lies the, both the frustration and the, and the promise is that like, you go, okay, I have someone, who, someone with leaky gut, which of these products do I do first? Do I do seed fiber, which I'm going to talk about? Would I do superfood, which I'm going to talk about? Would I do GBX burn? Would I do menta sink? You know, you, you can do any of those or all of those, or you could do all of those to begin with and then start tapering them off. Once you've, once you've sort of helped that tissue heal itself, you can sort of dial it back because now it's in a better position. Okay. So that's, that's what we do as coaches, right? Is help people sort of figure out what's going to be the, the right regimen for them now, and then transition to another regimen as they, as they move to a different place. Okay. Um, and then Nikki is saying, so would you only take sunset or omegas? Yeah, I would only, I would decide which one you would want to take, right? If you only care about the omega stuff that I just talked about, take omega. Um, if you want omegas, some omegas, but you also want tocotrienols and you also want astaxanthin, then I would say, go, go with sunset. That's why like, I want all that. And so that's why I'm switching back and forth. Like I'm, I'm going to do higher omegas on one night. I'm going to do lower omegas, but now with tocotrienols on another night, right? Because those are all, those are all wonderful, but I also don't want to, I don't want to always have to make that choice. So we're going to smush them together and have a best of both worlds kind of a product. Okay. All right. So let's see, let's see where we're going next. Oh, this is one of my favorite products. Um, this is meant to heart. This product does things that no other product in the market does. So uh, we actually we actually just got a patent on this a couple of months ago. Uh, that's very, very rare to get a patent on a finished nutritional product. You can get a patent on how you process an ingredient and we use a lot of patented ingredients in our in our products. So um, what would be a good example of that? Wellmune. Wellmune has a patent on the way. So Wellmune is the yeast beta glucan that we have in meant to sink. Wellmune has patents for the way that they extract the the one three one six beta glucan out of that yeast cell. There are other beta glucans on the market, but they're different from what Wellmune is, right? Because that none of them can use that same patented process. So you can do that for an ingredient, but then there's this beta glucan, that beta glucan, that one, that one, that one, that one, and so you have to really sort of look and and educate yourself about all right am i using the patented one that's used in the research etc it's really really rare to get a patent on a finished natural product so we applied for this i don't know two or three years ago um, based on the fact that this was the first time a nutritional product had ever been shown to um, improve the efficiency of the heart brain axis. So we know that we can improve the heart brain axis with exercise, 
with um, meditation, uh, with breath work. There's all kinds of ways we can improve the efficiency of how the heart and the brain are talking to each other. But it had never been shown with a nutritional product before. So what we decided to do with this product is we put together, a, a, you know, we selected a whole bunch of different heart health ingredients, bergamot orange that helps lower cholesterol, um, uh, what else do we have in here? Uh, black human seed oil that helps with inflammation. The two superstar ingredients in here though, and this is what the patent covers, is the combination of palm fruit bioactives that help to do, help to do a bunch of things. They, they help to change the electrical activity of the heart and astaxanthin. So the astaxanthin we use in here is the same astaxanthin that's in, uh, that's in Sunset. Um, but this is, before, this is before we knew we were going to merge these two companies together. So we put those two things together. What we found was, first of all, they improved sports performance. So we had people who were running on treadmills and riding on, on cycle ergometers. We were measuring their heart rates and their VO2 maxes, their oxygen uptake, and we're measuring their rating of perceived exertion, and we're measuring their work output. And on every measure we could look at, they were doing better work or they were doing the same amount of work and it felt easier for them, right? So no matter how we sliced it, their physical performance was better. But what we also found was that their psychological performance was better. And that was the subject of our patent. So this particular product is patented because it's the combination of palm fruit extract and astaxanthin together improves the efficiency of this heart-brain axis. And the way that we measured that, we measured something called heart rate variability. I don't know if there's anybody on, on the call right now that ever measures your heart rate variability. You might measure it and not even know you're measuring it. So I actively measure mine with this little band that I always have on my wrist. This is called a whoop band. If you have an aura ring that measures your sleep, it's also measuring your heart rate variability. If you have an Apple watch and your Apple watch tells you that you're, it might beep at you and tell you that you're overstressed and you need to, you need to breathe for a minute. That's measuring your heart rate variability. Heart rate variability, as I explained in the section about, about the heart-brain axis, is the interval of time between each heartbeat. So we can measure heartbeats, beat, 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 and we can tell you, you have 70 beats per minute. That's it. If you're in better shape physically, if you're in better shape psychologically, you'll probably have a lower heart rate. But the heart rate variability the, the interval of time between each one of those beats is directly related to your overall stress load on your body. And what we found was the, the combination of astaxanthin and palm fruit extract um, increases heart rate variability. That is an increase in heart rate variability is showing that your body is under lower stress load or your body is handling a stress load better. So if your heart rate variability goes down, you're under more stress. If your heart rate, variability, heart rate variability goes down, you're more likely to have a heart attack. If your heart rate variability goes down, you're more likely to be depressed or anxious or irritable or any of that kind of stuff. So heart rate variability in a lot of ways is an objective marker of what your subjective experience is likely to be. So if I do a hard workout, I did a really hard running workout yesterday, my heart rate variability this morning was a little lower than what it what it typically is during the week, right? So I have a I have an average that I that I, that I'm typically at. That hard workout put a lot of stress on my body, so my my heart rate variability dropped, and that's a signal to me that my body is still under stress. I'm not very recovered. So if I work out today, I'll do a just an easy workout to try to get myself out of that out of that hole that I dug myself into. If I said to myself today, I'm gonna go hard again, I might, I might dig a deeper hole. And if I go the next day and say, I'm gonna go hard again and dig a deeper hole, as my heart rate variability is going down, it's showing me my body is under a higher stress load. And I might get to the point where I push it a little bit too far and I get sick or I get hurt or I get injured or I get a tendonitis or something like that. So it can be really a cool thing that we use for athletes, but we were able to show that it also is something that we can use in the mainstream to say, look, you take this every day when you're under a lot of stress or on the days when you're under the more, the, 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 like a higher level of stress, you take a little bit more as a buffer to keep, to keep all your systems going in the right direction, okay? So sort of moral of this story is that when we launched this, 
people looked at it and they were like, oh, it's a heart product. And we're like, yeah, it's a heart product. And then we showed our data on the on the people exercising and we showed their performances better. And they said, oh, it's a it's a sports product, right? It's a sports performance product. It's like an ergogenic aid to help you work out harder. And we said, yes. And then we showed the psychological data that we filed the patents around. And they're like, oh, it's a mental product too. And it's, yes, so it's all of those. It's general health, it's sports performance, it's psychological performance, all in one product. And this is an example of, you hardly ever hear about this at Amari because we talk about happy juice and we talk about fundamentals and we talk about happy hormones and we talk about all this stuff. And then we've, we've talked people out and we don't even get a chance to have a conversation about something like this, which is you know the whole other set of, of, of heart brain axis compared to, to, compared to gut brain axis. But so anyway, there's a lot of things here where we can help people in slightly different ways. Okay, so there's that one. Let me see if there's any, uh, what's the name of the band? So it's called Whoop, um, W-H-O-O-P. Um, we, might, we might try to do some, uh, so the way that we measured heart rate variability in the, in the trial that we did, uh, we used something called, from a company called Heart Math. It, it's, just a, it's just a different tool to measure heart rate variability. Um, but what we might try to do is do something do something like a whoop band in our next trial because it's so easy. Like I never take this thing off. You can see you can see I have a wicked tan line under there because I it's on me all the time. Like it, the, the, the band dries quickly. So you know you can use it when you're out on the water. You can use it when you're working out. You can wear it in the shower. And I mean, it's I sound like a, I sound like a like an advocate for the company. And I have I have no affiliation with them at least until we do a research study together. Um, so let's see if there's any other questions in here. Is there anyone who shouldn't take men to heart? Yeah, there's only one category of people. Um, so if if somebody's on high blood pressure medications uh, or high cholesterol medications, or so they're on statins or they're on any of the any of the any of the medications that lower blood pressure, and they add men to heart, what men to heart is going to help them do naturally is keep their cholesterol under control naturally, um, keep their blood pressure control under naturally, and so if they went along with the same dose of medication, they would eventually be over-medicated and they would start to get side effects from being over-medicated. So it's not that they that those people can't take mental heart, it's that they have to be aware when they add mental heart that eventually they're gonna have to go and talk to their prescriber to get a readjustment to whatever that medication is, right? If you're on a high, too, too much of a statin, you're gonna get muscle pain and fatigue and you're just gonna feel awful. If you're on, a, if you're overdosed, on a high blood pressure medication, like when you stand up from your desk chair or you stand up from your car, you're gonna get lightheaded. You're gonna be dizzy all the time, right? So those are signals that now you're over-medicated because your body is in better balance with the natural therapies and you need a readjustment to your medications, okay? So that's the, that's the only caution there, all right? Um, so uh, George is saying, what do you recommend for lupus flare-up? So lupus is an autoimmune system uh, condition. So you've got a couple of things going there. You've got an immune system that's in overdrive. So you need to calm that. And the other piece of it is that it's, it's inflammatory. A lot of times these autoimmune system diseases um, are, it's one part, the cause is an overactive immune system, but the 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 fire, so to speak, is is too much inflammation. So a lot of times, what happens is you'll take an anti-inflammatory drug to solve the inflammation piece, but you haven't solved the immune system piece. Or you'll take an immunosuppressant drug to crush the immune system, and, and that lowers that lowers inflammation sort of secondarily. But now you've also crushed your immune system, so now you're at risk for catching every cold and catching every virus, and it increases your risk of cancer. So, like neither of those are good solutions. And so, for any of those autoimmune system problems, you would want to prime the immune system. You could lower inflammation directly with a Menta Heart or an Omega or a Sunset. But then you would also you would want to ask yourself the next question, which is where did the inflammation come from in the first place? Your immune system. Why was my immune system overactive in the first place? Your leaky gut. And so that's the third piece of the puzzle. We can solve the inflammation. We can solve the immune system activation, but we have to then see where did that immune system activation come from in the first place? And it's solving that leaky gut problem. So in that situation, 
whenever I see somebody with autoimmune system complaints, I always go right to leaky gut first. Let's get right to the root of the problem. Let's do things like I said before. Let's go, let's go and look at mentosync. Let's go and look at uh, seed fiber, which I'll talk about in a second, superfood, GBX burn. So all of those, let me put, let me put sync on there. So there's your, there's your leaky gut stack right there. It would be meant to sink, GBX burn, superfood, and seed fiber, right? All of those are coming at the leaky gut problem as the, like, if that's the root of the problem, let's go there first and then go up to the next piece and say, all right, do we need to do something for the immune system? Well, it just so happens that meant to sink and seed fiber, which you're already using for leaky gut, are also the immune system priming products. Meant to sink is priming because of the wellmune beta glucan from yeast. Seed fiber is immune system priming because of the um, because of the AHCC from shiitake mushroom mycelium. Okay, so like all these, every one of these products are, and I talk about this a lot in the class, are if you're trying to solve mental wellness problems, it's a it's a systemic problem, right? It's a multifactorial problem. You have to come at it with a multifactorial solution. You can't just do one thing. So in our autoimmune system example, even if we solve the leaky gut problem, there's still the immune system problem that needs to be solved. Okay, so we solve that one. But then there's still the, I'm not trying to give you guys the finger. I'm just do, do, doing an example here. Then there's the, the, then there's the inflammation problem. So we can solve that with an omega or a sunset or something like that. Um, so there, you've solved all three problems with... A, a little mini system, a little mini system, a little mini system. Okay. So we always have to be thinking with that systems mentality of it's never just one thing. You have to sort of peel back and say, what caused that? And what caused that? And what caused that? Go as far back in that dominoes game as you can. Okay. Um, and re relief. Yeah. Julianne just said relief. I've got relief as, as one of my ones to talk about today too. So this is going to be a direct anti-inflammatory in a different way then how omega is going to be. So if somebody has an inflammatory issue, let's say somebody has tennis elbow or something like that, some sort of an itis, and they they notice that they're having pain and it's a, it's affecting their daily, you know, daily functions, you you could say, well, omegas are going to lower inflammation in one set of way, biochemical pathways called the called the eicosanoid pathway, and then relief is a bunch of herbs that are going to work on different pathways. So this is working on one set of inflammatory pathways. This is working on some other sets of inflammatory pathways related to a different set of enzymes called called cyclooxygenases. Um, so what I'll tell people is like if you're in, if you're really achy right now, you've got low back issues, or you've got you know arthritis in your knee or something like that. Things we can't talk about, right? We can't talk about arthritis because that's a disease, but you can certainly get the benefits of more flexibility and more, more more mobility. I tell people take relief during the day and then take omega or sunset in the evening. So now you're coming at those inflammatory balancing pathways from two different perspectives at two different ends of the day. And that sometimes can be really, really effective for people. Okay. Um, all right. Before I get too far off, off trajectory here, um, where was I? I did mental heart. I did Omega. I did Menta Focus. Put this back over. I haven't talked about that. I talked about Menta Sync. Okay. Um, let me see if there's another question in here. Um, oh, <laughs> Pam, I'll just say it again right here. Pam, Pam had to go take a phone call and she wants to know what the leaky gut stack is. Um, I'll say it again because it's, and, and if anyone has questions about leaky gut specifically, let's, let's talk about that now. That's a big, big problem that is at the, that is at the cause of a lot of the mental wellness problems that we're going to try to help people through as mental wellness coaches. So leaky gut, uh, the, fir the first place I would start would be meant to focus. The next place that I would go would be superfood. Um, the next place I would go would be seed fiber. And the next place I would go would be GBX burn, right? So all four of those are going to have different ways of solving the leaky gut problem. And so when, when I say that, like leaky gut could be that you just need your junction to be tighter. 
it could be that you need to reduce inflammation around that part of the of the body so that the healing can happen. It could be that you need to grow more mucus lining to protect the gut from being damaged. It could be that you need... Um, well, here's one of the ways that mentobiotics helps with leaky gut. It gives you an amino acid called glycine, which is the fuel for your intestinal cells. If they're underfueled, they will, in a sense, like shrink, and that makes the gap more leaky. And so you need that cell to have enough fuel, which is glycine. And when it does, it sort of bulks up and it fi it, it fills that gap. So there's so there's so there's no leakiness. So there's good there's good integrity there. Um, so there those those are all different ways to solve leaky gut. And you do a bunch of different products like this, and you solve this cause of it, and that cause of it, and the other cause of it, etc. Okay. So meant meant to sink. Oh, I put a focus up there, didn't I? Sorry. Meant to sink. So it's meant to sink, GBX burn, superfood, and seed fiber. That's the leaky gut regimen right there. And ideally, you would have you would have mentobiotics on board too, but that's out of stock right now. So mentobiotics does help. It, so it, it's, Laura just put in, does mentobiotics not help with leaky gut? No, it does help with leaky gut, but in a different way uh, by giving that glycine that helps with as a as a um as a as a fuel source for your and an, an energy source for your for your enterocytes okay all right i'm going to put these to the side and we're going to go to the next one so let me talk about these guys uh superfood and seed fiber these are two products that are in our um our gbx foods line these are functional foods so you can think of superfood as kind of like the greens product. When you open it up, you can see mine's almost empty. I, I eat, I take this every single morning. Um, it is greens, but it's also reds and blues. And, you know, it's got, it's got the whole rainbow of, of different phytonutrients in here. And that's great. Most of us don't get our fruits and vegetable servings. This can help close that gap. This will give you about three servings of fruits and vegetables, you know, in each, in each serving of this is one of the reasons that I start my day with it. But the other reason I start my day with it is because one of the one of the extracts in here is something called uh, Japanese asparagus extract. Um, it it might be labeled on here as ETAS is the actual name of it. Yeah, it is. It says ETAS, E T A S, which stands for enzyme treated asparagus. Um, this is a, a very unique. It's not it's not the asparagus you're going to buy in the produce section of your grocery store. It's a it's a unique Japanese asparagus. It grows in Hokkaido, the northernmost Japanese island. Um, and when it's extracted, there's a little peptide in there, a little amino acid chain that can stimulate. Um, a, a production of these compounds in your body called heat shock proteins, specifically one called HSP70, heat shock protein 70. The reason they're called heat shock proteins is that when they were discovered, heat was a really good way to cause stress to cells if you were studying, studying cells in a Petri dish, in, in, a, in a test tube. So if we could put stress on these cells, we could see how the cells protect themselves, you know, how much stress kills them, how much stress makes them stronger, all, all that kind of stuff. And so when you stress out a cell it with heat, it makes these proteins that protect the cell from stress. It's not just heat that does that. Any sort of stress is going to cause the same biochemical reactions, but that's why they're called heat shock proteins. Um, we can take this asparagus and it will increase in all of our cells of our body it increased the production of these of these heat shock proteins. So on the one hand, sort of step one is it protects our cells from stress. So if our stress is coming from psychological stress, if it's coming from processed food stress, when we eat processed foods, we're, like our blood sugar levels might go up, that causes a kind of stress called glycation. It can protect us from that. It can protect us from um, environmental stress like heat uh, or ultraviolet light. Um, or air pollution, or water pollution, anything that's going to stress out our cells, the aging process can stress out our cells. If we have a better ability to make these protective proteins, we're going to protect our cells better. The other thing that heat shock proteins do is they stimulate a cleanup process in the cells called autophagy. Um, I don't know if anybody else knows, like if you've ever heard of autophagy before, Tell me where you've heard it and, and what else stimulates autophagy. Put it in the chat. Um, 
and uh, <laughs> yeah, Peter talks about uh, uh, Peter Atia talks about autophagy all the time as an anti-aging strategy. And Kathleen got it first fasting. When you fast, one of the main health benefits of fasting or exercising, thank you, Gail, um, is that it increases the body's uh, a process of autophagy. Autophagy is like the cellular cleanup crew. They go in, they, they break down dysfunctional proteins and dysfunctional enzymes, and they use those building blocks to make new proteins and new enzymes that work better. So you really want this process. So fasting will do it. Exercise will do it. Um, there are companies that are trying to develop drugs that do it, because if you do that, it is legitimately an anti-aging regimen at the cellular level in every single one of your cells. So think about that. If you could protect your cells from damage and you could clean up the damage more efficiently, you're going to work better in all your cells, in all your organs, in your entire organism. That it, it, it would be miraculous if somebody ever developed a drug that way. But why should we develop a drug if we can get it with this asparagus extract, right? This is why I take this every single morning. It's what I start every single day with. And you can, I mean, you can throw it in your happy juice. You can mix it up your own. You can throw it in your smoothies. It's a really, really good way to do it. So the way that we get people is like, how long did that just take me to explain about autophagy, right? Five minutes. The way that we get people to say, hey, do you get five to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables every day? And everybody says, no, because nobody does. You say, well, here's three of them right here. And then we're, they're getting the autophagy benefits in the background because of the increase in heat shock protein. So, so that's, a, that's some good stuff right there. Seed fiber uh, is another sort of like bait and switch sort of a thing, right? So the other thing that most people don't get enough of is fiber. Now I've talked about that a lot, right? That our biggest nutrient deficiency, even more of a nutrient deficiency, deficiency than omega-3s, is a fiber deficiency. And so this is a way to close your fiber gap. And it's specifically prebiotic fibers that we're giving with these, with these seeds. So what we do is we take these cold pressed seeds and when they're pressed, we can get the oil out of them. And so when we're pressing fish, we want the oil. When we're pressing seeds, we actually don't want the oil. Somebody else can take the seed oil and do whatever they're gonna do with it. What we want is the seed hull. And that's what you see in here. This powder in here, is crushed up, milled seed hulls. And so we don't do any extractions. We just crush them and grind them into a powder because what they're high in is prebiotic fiber and phytonutrients. So you've got that, right? Helping people close that prebiotic fiber gap. The downside of this is that it tastes pretty, it tastes pretty fibery. Um, so I mix this with my superfood. And you know, as we're as we're merging these two companies together, Kiani and Amari, this is one of the Amari products that's going to get merged in and of itself. So we're gonna we're gonna take these two products away, and what we're gonna come back with is sort of a half and half. We're gonna we're gonna keep the asparagus extract that's in here. We're gonna keep the greens and the and the servings of fruits and vegetables that are in here. But we're gonna add some of the seed fibers so you get a higher fiber content. The other ingredient that is in here that is really unique ingredient is the AHCC that I talked about a couple of lectures ago. This is, um, it's a little bit different than the beta glucan that's in Menta Sync. I lost Menta Sync, there it is. Um, but it does the same thing. It also primes your immune system. AHCC is from a mushroom, a shiitake mushroom, and it's at alpha glucan. So it's doing the same thing in terms of priming your immune system. So if your immune system is low, it's bringing it up to normal. If your immune system is overactive, it's bringing it down to normal. And so I take meant to sink every day, but I also take seed fiber every day to make sure my immune system is primed to protect me from what, whatever airplane air I'm breathing or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, so that's those, but like, I think most people don't have a perspective for these products, because like like a lot of these, they're they're at the end of our product line. After we've talked about a really cool microbiome product and a really cool gut brain access product and a really cool motivation product and a really cool hormone balancer and a really cool you know like by the time you get down to product nineteen, it's still a really cool product, but like the the attention span is gone for most people, right? So in this out of stock situation, right? When you can't sell, you know, the whiz bang mintabiotics or the super cool happy juice, you can go, hey, you know what I've got? I've got something that's gonna increase your autophagy. 
this one. I've got something that's going to prime your immune system. I've got a leaky gut regimen for you to try until these other products come back back in stock. Okay, so that's that's one of the reasons I wanted to go through some of this stuff. Um, oh, Robin, you are a you are a superstar. So Robin is saying I add seed fiber to stews and chili in addition to smoothies. I never thought about doing that. That's a that it probably hides pretty well in in something like that. That's awesome. Um, all right, let me see real quick. Lots of people are using it in smoothies, overnight oats. Um, I've put it in cookies before. Um, in fact, we do a we do here at the at the mental wellness center that we run. We do sometimes in the afternoon we'll put out like like a little sweet treat for for the guests who are staying here, and it's it's what we call stress cookies. And the stress cookies have in it it has in it um, uh, an ashwagandha. We use the same ashwagandha that we use in. Uh, mood plus. So we put some of that in there and then we put in superfood and seed fiber. And then people come and they eat one of the cookies and they go, wow, great cookies. And then we have to break the bad news to them that they're actually good for them in certain ways, right? Some of these, some of these ways that I just talked about. So, um, so we get to do that. All right. Let me see. Let me see what else I've got here. Fun to talk about. Um, so I talked about GBX burn a little bit. So th this one, I already talked about what I wanted to talk about. The so people look at this and they go, okay, cool. It has these two African spices in it that help with thermogenesis, right? Help burn more calories. So we take this with food and it helps us burn calories from that meal that we just ate. So we have less calories left over to store as body fat. So we say that this helps you keep it off because you're burning the calories before you have the ability to, 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 to store them. That's what the African spices are doing. Um, there's a blend of amino acids in here, specific amino acids called branch chain amino acids that your muscles will use as a fuel source. And if your muscles are using that as their fuel source, just like what I explained a few minutes ago, a different amino acid, glutamine, is being used by your intestinal cells to bulk themselves up. These branch chain amino acids, your muscle cells will use to bulk themselves up. So then you can maintain your muscle mass while you're losing fat. That's a big problem for a lot of people as they're losing weight, they'll lose fat but they'll also lose muscle. And that looks like a lot of weights being lost on the scale, but it's actually not good for your long-term ability to keep the weight off. Because if you lose too much muscle, that means you're not gonna be able to burn your fat and, and metabolize your sugar and burn your calories. And so you're much more likely to gain the weight back later on. So, so that's a really good way to keep your muscles in high metabolic mode, give them branch chain amino acids. But the ingredient that I really wanted to highlight in this, in this GBX burn is the one I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the carrot pomace. So when carrots are harvested and you, I don't know if you guys know this, right? You know, those little baby carrots that you get, you get to buy, buy a bag of baby carrots in the, in the produce section. And it's usually like a half pound bag or a pound bag. And it's, three dollars and everybody loves them and you 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 go and buy them and they're, they're great for dipping they're great for throwing in salads you don't have to peel any carrots do you guys know where they come from where those baby carrots come from does anyone know put it in the chat if you know a lot of people think that they just grow the grow them until they're this big and then they pick them they come from big carrots thank you linda yeah so they take big carrots and they then they they mill them down they just go bzz, little carrot little carrot, little carrot. So little carrots come from big carrots, which is just blows my mind, all that wastage that happens. Luckily, we have a partner in Denmark, in, uh, in the Netherlands, that takes that leftover stuff from making the little carrots, um, which is called carrot pomace, it's carrot fiber, um, and they grind it down even more and they do an extraction on it. And that extract is what we have in here. The extract is a really, really unique compound, kind of like a glucan, kind of like a beta glucan, kind of like an alpha glucan that is good for your immune system. So we get all those immune system benefits that I've already talked about that we have in menta sink and we have in seed fiber. We also get immune system benefits in here, but the reason we have it in here is because that glucan can help tighten up uh, leaky gut. And so leaky gut for people who are trying to lose weight is a death sentence, right? It, like if you're trying to lose weight and you have leaky gut, 
you were going to be the person who was doing all the right things. You're eating right, you're exercising, you're getting your sleep, you're on a perfect regimen, and you're nothing is budging. You are stuck. That stuck person is a leaky gut person almost 100% of the time. So if we can solve leaky gut, you know, I gave you my leaky gut stack before. This is a we we, we can help that person start moving in the right direction again. They're, then their regimen gains traction. That's the main reason that we developed this product, right? To help that leaky gut person gain traction and then not add the weight back on again, right? The 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 African spice piece that I said before. So are there any are there any questions about about this? Uh oh, somebody put something about Nutella in there. I got to go read what this one is. I also add, oh, so you add seed fiber to Nutella. That's great. Okay. To put on toast in the morning. That's a, that's a good, that's a good thing. Um, okay. Looks like, looks like we're good in there. So that's that one. Um, did I have, I did have fit in here. So we're coming up on a time of year, you guys. So our, within Amari, our approach to weight loss is let's help people feel better first, right? The mental wellness piece. Let's make sure that we're we're not putting someone on a restrictive plan. Let's make sure we're not telling somebody that they have to, you know, have this deprivation lifestyle and the whole diet culture and stuff like that. But then let's let's actively improve serotonin so you're happier and dopamine so you're motivated and all that kind of stuff, right? Let's lower cortisol so you're not having trouble losing your belly fat. And right. So it's that's the mental wellness approach to weight loss. But I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand that there are there are three big peaks to the weight loss seasons, if you will. One of them is New Year's. Everybody knows about that one, right? Everybody wants to lose weight after the holidays. The other one is right before summer. So like bikini season kind of thing, right? When people are going to go out and hit the beach, they want to lose weight. The third one, people forget about this. It's right before school starts again right? At the end of summer, when the kids go back to school, which in a lot of places is happening next week, um, that is another peak in weight loss season. Um, and it, it's for a reason I don't, I, I think a lot of people don't have an appreciation for it. Does anyone know what it is? You put it in the, in, in the chat, like New Year's makes sense. Everybody gained weight over the holidays. So now we need to lose it. Summertime makes sense. Everyone's going to go get in their bathing suit and go to the beach. So you want to lose a, a couple of pounds. What, why is it when the kids go back to school, Routines. Yeah. It, it, so once the kids go back to school, people are like, okay, now I need to get my stuff together again. Right. We were all, and we were in complete disarray over the summer. No one was on a, on a calendar. We were going to cookouts, you know, we had 4th of July, all that kind of stuff. And now people are like, now I'm going to buckle down. Party's over. Exactly. The party's over. We're going to get back to, we're going to get back to our normal schedule. And a lot of times that's when people say, yep, I'm going to, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And so right now, is a really good time to say to somebody, look, here's GBX Fit, the world's first quad biotic, the first approach to using the microbiome to help with appetite, to help with sugar cravings, to help with fat loss. So we've got that one. And then GBX Burn, which we came out with at the beginning of this year for all the reasons that I just said, help you burn the calories from your food, increase the thermogenesis, tighten up the, 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 the leaky gut, maintain your muscle mass, all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really unique sort of a system that fits right in with somebody who's like, okay, let's get, let's get back on a schedule now. Okay. So, so this is the time that people are really interested in that kind of stuff. Um, I was going to say something. Oh, the other thing I was going to say about this is, um, and we didn't have a, uh, we didn't have a huge appreciation for this when we launched this. I'm, I'm, I'm holding GBX Fit. Um, we didn't have as, as big an appreciation for this when we launched it two years ago as we do now. Um, how many people have heard of these new drugs that are out, these weight loss drugs? Um, one is called Ozempic, which is probably the one you've heard of. There's another one that's very similar called Wigovi. There's another one that's a little bit different, similar but different, called Mujaro. Um, they, oh, somebody put in UGG into the, you probably heard a lot about them, right? Um, they are what are called, um, they're called uh, GLP-1 agonists. So GLP-1 is a particular appetite hormone that your gut makes. And so when you eat, your gut will make this hormone. It goes out into your bloodstream. It gets up into your brain. It does a couple of things. So it was discovered as an anti-diabetes drug because when you make it, it helps you lower your blood sugar. So when you eat, your blood sugar levels go up. 
your body makes this hormone. It helps the, helps the blood sugar levels go down. So it was originally developed as an anti-diabetes drug. It does a great job of helping you modulate blood sugar. Um, the other thing that it does is it gets to your brain and it tells you that you're not hungry. It's, a, it's what we call a satiety hormone. It increases satiety, which means it reduces hunger. And so people who get on any of those drugs, their, their hunger goes away, their blood sugar is better. So they're not eating as much. And they're they're burning more they're burning more fat. If your blood sugar level is more modulated, you can have an easier time with 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 fat fat metabolism. Um, one of the strains of bacteria that we have in here increases GLP one. So like we knew that when we put it in, that's the reason that we put it in there, right? The um the uh, the particular strain called called BPL one. <laughs> this is a lot of initials, right? The the BPL one strain will it naturally increase your GLP one production from your gut. So in a sense, this is a natural way to do the same thing that the synthetic is doing, right? And we have lots of examples of those, right? Make more serotonin so you don't have to take Prozac. Make more uh, melatonin with Sleep Plus so you don't have to take melatonin. You, you, you guys get the idea. Same thing's happening here. So TikTok went bananas about six months ago with everybody saying, oh, berberine, which is a which is a flavonoid that you can find in the Mediterranean diet. Berberine is the natural glip one. It's not even close to being that. BPL-1 pro probiotic strain is closer to a natural glip one than anything else. And so that's why we have actually had people have to stop doing the advanced dosage of this. So GVX Fit is, is just one, one capsule between meals. Like, you know, mo most people take it first thing in the morning before they've eaten anything and they're doing a little bit of a fasting, right? So they're, you know, they've got a period of time where they've got, you know, they've got em empty stomachs so they take it first thing in the morning. Advanced dosage would be you'd take another capsule end of the day, you know, between, between whatever your two meals are. We've had a lot of people who have had to stop doing that because it's too much of an appetite control. And we actually, we actually want people to eat, right? That's one of the reasons that we give you sort of an eating framework. We want you to eat. You have to be stoking the fires, right? Stoking the metabolism to maintain your muscles and, you know, sort of it, it's a, it's a terminology called metabolic flux. You need energy going through the system in order to, to more efficiently get the energy stored in your body off of your body, right? So, I won't go too too much further down in that. We don't want people starving themselves. But if you're getting this app, you're getting the satiety signal at too high a level, you're just not hungry at all. And so anyway, there's again, it's a Goldilocks thing, right? We want a little bit of that effect, the right amount of that effect. We don't want too much of that effect. Okay, so let, let me just leave it there. GBX burn, GBX fit. This is a perfect time of year to be talking to people about you know sort of sort of getting back getting back on their system. Um, so yeah, Susan, this is a great question. Someone who's weight loss resistant, I really love that terminology, should do the leaky gut protocol first and then the fit and burn program. So fit and burn is going to do a little bit of that leaky gut piece, right? Because you've got, you've got the, the carrot pomace effect that's going on with, with, with burn. But if you suspect that, that leaky gut is their main problem, you might exactly want to do that before you start the losing regimen, so to speak. You want to you want to tighten up those junctions. So you might go for a, like their first month might be on that leaky gut regimen that we talked about. They might just they might just do that for a month to make sure that they're solving that problem, and then they go to the active weight loss phase. I think that's a that's a brilliant idea. And as a coach, what you want to be able to do is say like, look, this is what I'm thinking we might want to do. What do you think about this? Get their buy-in on it. Make sure that, that that they're ready for something like that because the 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 way that that could backfire is that they do that one month of, of program and then they come back to you as the coach and say, I didn't lose any weight. I'm still in the same stuck place. So you have to be able to educate them of like, here's what we're going to do. You know, we're not going to, we're not going to run a marathon today. We're going to start with a 5k, right? Sort of take them in baby steps and say, we need to get your metabolism in the place where it's ready to run you know, where it's ready to lose and it's ready to be, you know, appetite controlled and all that other stuff. Okay. So yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great, great approach. Um, uh, let me see what this is. Can you talk about the optimal use and timing of fit and burn? Uh, anything more suggestions than fit on an empty stomach and with exercise and burn with food? Um, no, that Julian, that's as, that's as, that's as detailed as it needs to get. 
Um, so with the, with the dosing of these, the reason you want this on an empty stomach is to um, is a couple of reasons, right? You, on an empty stomach, you have a little bit better delivery of probiotics uh, than if you took it with food. But burn, you have to take with food. You could take fit with food too if you wanted to. It just makes it easier for us dosing-wise to say, take fit empty stomach, take burn with food. You have to take burn with food. Food, I mean, the, the those those African spices are spicy enough where if you took it on an empty stomach, it would give a lot of people heartburn. But they're, the whole reason you're taking them with food is to encourage that 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 thermogenesis, specifically something called uh, food induced thermogenesis or diet induced thermogenesis. It's the thermogenesis that comes after a meal. We're trying to enhance that specific piece of it with those spices. So it doesn't have to get any more complicated than that. Okay. Um, and then if you use fit, you you have uh, you can you can wait a minute. So if you use fit, you have to move, i.e., walk, exercise or you won't release the fat. Yeah, so 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 this is a good point. So fit is gonna, one of the signals that it works on is getting your fat cells to release their fat, okay? So first of all, that's a problem. If you can't get that signal, your body's just gonna hold its fat. And people, inflammation can cause us to hold our fat. Cortisol can hold, can hold our fat. Um, estrogen imbalances can help us hold our fat. So, you know, the, the, those are all those are all signals that we have to work on to enable fat release. But now the fat is released and it's available to us. If we just sit there and watch TV, the body's going to go, oh, we didn't. I, I, I guess we didn't need this fat to be released, and it's going to restore it. And so that's why with fit, you do have to move because once that fat is released, you need to do something to 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 burn it off, right? So that again, it doesn't mean you have to. Doesn't mean you have to start training for an Ironman, but you have to go out there and walk the dog. And that's going to enable your body to access that fat that you've released. It's not going to release it when it's when it's tightly bound and stored, but but we gotta we gotta do something in order to burn it once it's once it's released from its storage. Okay. Um <laughs> Pam, Pam is asking the perennial question uh of 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 the ages. What is the reason that some can take supplements without food and be fine, my husband, um, and me, uh, makes me so incredibly nauseous. I'm able to take fit, mood, and relief uh, uh, on an empty stomach. That's a, so men and women are different, right? That's, I actually thought you were going to ask something different when I saw husband in there. I thought you were going to say, why, why does my husband lose more weight? quickly and and I don't right as the as the as the woman that that happens all the time it has more to do with what i just said estrogen holds the fat in your storage so it's really really difficult to release unless you have those right signals one of them is an estrogen signal one of them is a cortisol signal one of them is an inflammation signal and these products are working on on all of that um uh, but the nausea thing is a is 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 just individual differences right so i can take in a fasting state, I can take all my morning supplements, just and wash it down with my happy juice. At night, I put my other supplements that I can't do that with, right? So I have a snack before I go to bed. So I always have a little bit of food on board. Um, and that's when I take digestive, omega or sunset, uh, sleep plus, things that would normally on a nauseous stomach give me a problem. I take then because I because I don't have I don't have an empty I don't have an empty stomach. The one product that probably would give everybody nausea if you took it on an empty stomach is um, burn would give you heartburn, but Vita GBX would would make you feel sick would make you feel sick to your stomach, um, and that's that's for two reasons. One is the 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 overall concentration of those nutrients is so much. That if you took it on an empty stomach, it's like even the most iron gut person is probably going to have a problem. But the reason, the other reason you really want to take it with food is the absorption is going to be better. Vitamins and minerals are much better absorbed in the matrix of a mixed meal, meaning some protein, some carbohydrate, some fat, some fiber. And so that's why we really encourage people take that with your largest meal because you're going to get you're going to get better absorption and you're going to get less less stomach upset. Okay, so let me see what else I've got on here. Uh, probiotics, all I was gonna say about probiotics is that this is one of the very few products on the market still 
that it, that has strain designation, right? That we that we actually tell you on here what strains of probiotic you're using. Um, and so most of these are for for gut health and immune system health and mineral absorption and those sorts of things. So a really really nice broad spectrum probiotic product that you know is is good for lots of people just to throw in their cart because so many people these days are looking for a probiotic. This at least gives them a broad spectrum of pretty well substantiated strains at, at a good price versus some generic something that they're going to find at the store. Um, I talked about relief already and how that works on different pathways of, of inflammation. Um, digestive. I have a personal testimonial with this product. So I used to, and I think I probably may, may, maybe told some of you this story before, but I'll, I'll repeat it again, just for the, just for the bigger group. Um, I used to have really, really bad reflux. So at night I would, you know, when I would go to sleep, I would get woken up in the night because I had such bad heartburn. Like I have to go into the bathroom, drink water, eat Tums. We used to have a giant thing of Tums right next to the sink because it was so bad. And I actually got, I actually got an endoscope, uh, uh, endoscopy and they told me, oh, it's all red down there. You're at high risk for, for this thing called, called Barrett's esophagitis. It's a precursor for cancer of the esophagus because you get, you get all inflamed there. And as your body starts to heal, you can, you can develop cancerous lesions. And so I was like, I don't want to be that guy, right? The, you know, fit 50 something year old gets cancer and dies six months later. Right. I didn't want that. I didn't want that to be my story. And so the 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 gastroenterologist said, well, we're going to put you on these on these acid blockers. We're going to give you an H2 blocker for the day. We're going to give you a PPI proton pump inhibitor in the evening. Very common therapy for people with 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 GERD, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and and your and your symptoms go away. The problem with that is that those drugs are only supposed to be used short term. 14 days maximum for most of them. And there's people who are on those drugs for 14 years. And the problem with that is that it changes the acid production here in your gut, it, here in your stomach. Because you have different acid in your gut, it changes the environment in your small intestine. That changes the environment in your large intestine. The environment of your large intestine changes the bacteria that grow. So your microbiome changes. All of that change in your, in your gut changes the signals that go to your brain you're on those drugs for a long period of time, it actually increases your risk for Alzheimer's by about 40%, right? So like, I'm a scientist, I know all of this. And I said, well, I'm not going to do those drugs. And so I had to come up with something for me to, to, for me to change. I already had a pretty good diet. I was already physically active. I'm not overweight. Like I didn't have any of the red flags for typical people with GERD. So that's where this came in, digestive. So this is digestive enzymes, which is one part of the formula. So it's, it's, it's enzymes that work in your stomach. It's enzymes that work in your small intestines, enzymes that work in your colon, right? All pieces of the, of the, of the gastrointestinal tract. Um, th it's enzymes that digest carbs and, and other enzymes that digest fats and other enzymes that digest proteins, right? So it's working on all the different things to make sure you have good digestion. The other piece of it though, are herbs that are, that are called motility enhancers. So we have a blend that it's a patented blend. It's called pro digest. It's a patent around the combination of artichoke leaf and ginger root. And that combination helps to increase motility by 20, 25%, which means it can take the food that's in your stomach and get it out of your stomach into your small intestine so your real digestion can happen. If your food sits there in your stomach and it doesn't move out quickly enough, then your body makes more acid and more acid and more acid, and that's what causes the GERD. It's not the acid necessarily. It's the fact that the food hasn't left. The food got into your stomach and it's just sitting there because you have poor motility. So that's what my problem was. My problem was poor motility and those herbs help the food get out of there. And when that gets out of there, the acid gets out of there. So it wasn't a problem of let's shut off the acid. It was a problem of let's get rid of the food and you can do that naturally. And so I did that. And so we launched this six or seven years ago. I, I swear I haven't woken up, well, I can wake myself up. If I were to eat a big spaghetti meal, like a really, really good red sauce um, and a big glass of red wine, I would probably have a heartburn that that night, right? But otherwise, uh, you know, regular eating, regular before bed snack, that kind of stuff. 
I don't have any more heartburn because of this, right? It has, it has com it completely changed my life because not, not only do you not want heartburn, you don't want to be waking up three or four times a night because that in, you know, uh, impacts your sleep quality. So that's a, that's a really, really cool thing. But here we go again. Most of what I just said is perfectly non-compliant. If we were out there trying to sell this to a customer, we couldn't say this is going to reduce your GERD. That's a disease. We couldn't say this is going to reduce your heartburn. Heartburn is technically a disease from the view of the FDA. I couldn't say this is going to replace your H2 blockers or your Pepsid or your any of that kind of stuff. That's a disease claim because we're trying to compare a natural to a pharmaceutical. So what you'd have to say is like we talked about last, last lecture, you'd have to say, this is going to help with your digestion. This is going to help with your digestive comfort. This is going to help uh, with motility. You could say motility, help move the food through your digestive tract, right? So we have to get creative sometimes with, with, with how we talk about these things so we can get as much good information across to people so they can make, make the right decisions without kind of you know crossing, crossing the line into, into some of that disease language. Um, and I guess the last one, I'll, 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 I'll end on this one. We've already gone, we've already gone over time. Um, this is also is another, is another product that is, I, I don't know why this one isn't selling as well as the female version. So this is the uh, Ignite for him. The Ignite for her, the, the estrogen sort of balancer, uh, is one of our is one of our top selling products, right? The, the, the main ingredient in there is something called Shadavari. Um, the sort of second main ingredient is something called fenugreek. The two of those help to balance estrogen, Shadavari, and testosterone, fenugreek. Um, <clears throat> and then it has some other herbs in there that help with with relaxation and energy and 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 that sort of thing. But the main reason that, that that women take it is to balance their estrogen and balance their testosterone. And it sells like hotcakes. Like that's another one that is hard for us to keep in stock because it's just it's doing a lot of things for a lot of people. Most women are taking it to help with horm to help with like hot flashes and postmenopausal sort of symptoms. Can't talk about menopause. That's a disease. So we have to talk about maintain normal hormone balance and you know maintain normal estrogen levels levels and things like that. And women get that, right? That we're talking about that sort of thing. But a lot of women now are also getting benefits on other things we can't talk about. Things like endometriosis um, and PMS, premenstrual uh, syndrome, um, and, and heavy periods and you know, like all that, all that sort of stuff benefit from hormone balance as well. So you can see why it's a, why it's a good seller. On the men's side, this helps with testosterone like nothing that I've ever seen before. I've used these herbs, these same exact herbs. Uh, we use cordyceps, <clears throat> excuse me, which is a Chinese mushroom. Uh, we use rhodiola, which is a Tibetan root. And we use tongadali, which is a Malaysian root. And they all help to balance testosterone and help with oxygen delivery in slightly different ways. I've used that blend, the same blend of those three in sports products for years and years and years. We would give this same blend to endurance athletes and they would be able to keep going. So if they were going at a certain speed, they could just keep chugging along because they have better oxygen delivery. Um, for athletes that are training really hard, like I, at the top of the call, I talked about training, 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 and your heart rate variability goes down and down and down. These herbs can also help you recover faster so you can go hard the next day without digging yourself into a hole. So it makes a lot of sense to use this for physical performance benefits on an athletic side. And so that's one of the reasons that I take this every day. But I'm also at the age, I'm in my, my mid 50s, where my testosterone levels are starting to get to the point where like, they, it could be an issue, right? I'll start to lose muscle mass, I'll start to lose, I'll start to gain belly fat, I'll start to get irritable. And you know, like depressed is a big like low testosterone in men is a big trigger for depression. And so this is a great way to maintain all of that. And I think I think a lot of guys will look at something like this and go, well, I don't I don't need that. That's not that's not my problem, right? Guys don't want to admit that they have any of those issues going on. And I say, take this for the for the performance benefits and it, it'll it'll help you sort of push off those 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 potential problems into further years, right? So it doesn't happen in your mid 50s, it happens in your mid 80s or something like that, right? So what this is doing is helping your body to access 
it's free testosterone. So it's not a testosterone booster. It's not going to take you from, from, from having low testosterone up to high testosterone, but it will take you from low testosterone up to normal testosterone and keep you there. And that's an example of an adaptogenic sort of an herb, right? It gets you to that balance point and doesn't push you ahead. It's not a it's not a natural version of an anabolic steroid. That is not what this does. It really just helps you access what your body has already made. So uh, this is something like I highly, highly recommend that guys take a look at this. Um, you know, if it's if it's not for specifically for testosterone uh, maintenance, it can be just for the for the athletic performance uh, benefits. And I saw as I was talking about this, I saw a lot of comments in there, uh, and people are saying it works. My it took my. I had oh you took your husband off of it wink wink um, yeah there are there are obviously sexual performance benefits to it as well right on the on the female side there's those sexual performance benefits on the men's side there's other sexual performance benefits if you're maintaining that youthful hormone pro profile so um, yeah definitely definitely take it take a look at it um, a lot of people a lot of people are just saying uh, my husband swears by it my husband swears by it etc. Do women ever need to take Ignite for him? You, you, you potentially could. Um, so a lot of the female athletes that I work with will go on a course of this during their hardest training phases. You know, so they might be training sort of regular, 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 and then they'll have a peak of training to get ready for an event. During that peak of training, their testosterone level sometimes can drop. And this is a good way to keep their testosterone levels from dropping. Um, so, so female athletes can use that. Sometimes um, women who have a drop in their testosterone levels, usually fenugreek takes care of that. Fenugreek is sort of a, um, it maintains testosterone, but it's a weaker version, if you will, of what Tongata Lee in here does. And so that's why we put Tongata Lee in the men's version, because they need more of a testosterone enhancement. And we put fenugreek in the female version because they need less of that effect. But sometimes if they need more, they can go on the men's for, you know, one week out of four is a very common way to do it, where you'll take the men's version for a week. You'll take the women's version for three weeks of your of your monthly cycle, uh, and so that that's a very popular way to do it. Um, sometimes women will just completely switch over to the men's for a month and then go back to the women's, uh, and that's a, a little bit of you know again the art of of sort of figuring out where what 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 the best regimen is going to be for people. Uh, but but definitely you can you can use them sort of you know back and forth like that if you if you need to. Um, and th th there's some people in the in the. Uh, chat who are who are saying that I do CrossFit four times a week and I just started using it. I think it really helps with endurance and recovery. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let me just look in here. That's all the show and tell that I wanted to do. I think I went through all the products that I have out here. Yes, and let me go in here and see if there's any more last little things that I want to call out. Um, I give probiotic to my dog as well, Pam. Um, my dogs every day get. Um, they get either omega or sunset in their in their breakfast. They get probiotics um, in the evening. Sometimes, if they're if they're agitated at all, we'll give them a dropper of um, of hemp, hemp GBX, to just sort of calm them down and you know take take the edge off for them. Um, people ask us sometimes if we're ever going to go into pet supplements, and I, I would love to someday because, like, I think that that fits perfectly as the mental wellness company. Like, I get so so many mental benefits from my from my doggos. Um, if we can keep them healthy, that's you know that's going to be good for my mental wellness. So I think it I think it sort of fits. Um, I don't see anything else in here. Uh, PCOS that's something that that really benefits from the from the Ignite products. Um, could they try Ignite for him? Usually, usually the the female version Ignite for her is enough to help with PCOS because that's a again that's an adaptogenic effect, right? A lot of times, women with PCOS will have high estrogen and high testosterone, and so you want to you want to bring that down. And the combination of Shadavari and Fenugreek is usually really good at doing that. Okay, um, so there, I think that's it. Are there any questions that people want to ask? If anybody wants to raise their hand, we've got another couple of minutes I can stay on here. I see Linda waving at me. Go ahead, unmute yourself, Linda. I asked it in the uh, chat, is there any time that you're gonna maybe make us a re uh, like a food replacement shake? Because right now I am putting super fiber, the seed, the 
protein, the VBX. I mean, I'm just making this whole concoction every morning and I'd love to be able to just take two scoops and go. Yeah. So, so when we formulated the GBX foods, we, we specifically deconstructed it, right? So that we had one product that's protein, um, one product that is the greens and the, you know, fruits and vegetables, one product that is the fiber to let people do whatever concoction they wanted, right? Some want more fiber, some want less, some want more greens, some want less, some want two scoops of protein, some want one scoop of protein, you know, et cetera. So that was our approach instead of putting it all in one, because you put it all in one and you've got, you've got one solution, right? Here we, 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 we went the sort of, you know, multi, multi route. Um, now that we're merging the two companies, we have got on the Amari side, we've got three products, protein, superfood, um, seed fiber. And on the Kiani side, we've got one product, Origin, or Fit20 is the is this is the sort of um is the way version. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is uh, just like I described with Omega and Sunset, we're merging them together. We're gonna merge all this together. We're gonna take the the meal replacement idea of Origin, and we're gonna put it together with the asparagus extract and the AHCC and more fruits and vegetables. And we're going to put them together. So you have one thing that solves all those problems. And I know what's going to happen. We're going to get some people who go hooray, like you just did. Oh, now I can just put this in and mix it up and I'm done. And you're going to other people who say, well, I liked the, I liked the, the way where I could mix it up. However, I wanted that day. I liked the, I liked the variability of it. And so you can't, you can't solve that for everybody. So that, that's what we're going to do. Um, I've tasted the, the the new version of it. We actually added some other nice little bells and whistles that I think you guys are going to really like. And it tastes amazing. And uh, I, I just don't know when when marketing and sales is going to launch it, but it's re it's it's ready to go whenever they're whenever they're well, ready. Anytime you want to add that cookie in there, we I, I think we'll all buy the cookie. <laughs> Sounds good. Renee. Thanks, Dr. Sean. This has been awesome. Do you mind sharing with us your routine? I know you've said several times, I take this and I take that. And I'm just curious about um, so many products. And also I take other vitamins like um, I take um, magnesium citrate yeah. because I've heard before that that helped with anxiety and I had a huge uh, postpartum anxiety situation. So I've been taking it since then. And I also take chromium colonate and things like that. So yeah. I'm just curious about um, number one, what is your regime? And number two, um, if I take a robust regime of Amari products, can I eliminate like vitamin D, chromium picolinate, magnesium, those other things that I take. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, so for the first one, I'll say, instead of taking time on this, I'll refer you to either my YouTube page uh, or my blog where I've I've written about that and done a video about it, where I say like, all right, people ask me this all the time. What's your regimen? Here it is. And I and I go through it. So you can you can take notes on that if you want to. Um, but yeah, if you if you go through the whole like Kiani uh, Amari product line, we, like we're talking about 35 or so products now at this point, but we don't have everything, right? I take an additional magnesium that that I that I I go to the store, well, I go to Amazon and I buy a magnesium and, and I take that. We're developing a magnesium so that uh, so that I don't have to do that anymore, so that we have a magnesium in our line. That that we can that we can access. It's going to be a really really cool magnesium. We're sourcing it from a from a from a very cool part of the world. Um, so you'll hear more about that when that launches. Um, but things like like chromium, you don't need that if you're taking vitamin GBX. You don't need a vitamin D if you're taking vitamin GBX. Uh, except in the winter time, I take an additional vitamin D during the winter, uh, just until. So what is it? What month is it now? It's August. I'm not taking it now. I won't start taking it until. Uh, September, October. I probably won't start taking it until beginning of November, um, and then I'll take it all the way until May. Um, j just because I live, I live near Boston, and that's the latitude where you, where you need more vitamin D. Um, but yeah, you can you can go and you can go and see that, and you know. But most of the things I, I want to get to the point where we're not gonna we're, like Amari will never have five hundred products, you know, like some of the companies out there. Um, but I do want to get to the point where from a nutritional standpoint, especially from a mental wellness nutritional standpoint, we're a one-stop shop. Okay. So we need a magnesium. We, there's a couple things in our line that we need that we don't have right now. Okay. But because we're a young company. Okay. All right. 
And maybe let's do maybe let's do one more question if there's one out there, and then we'll wrap it up for today. And if there's not, all right, awesome, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'll post up later on what what day and time the uh, webinar is going to be next week. Okay. See you guys. Bye -bye. Thanks, John.